Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Cats Track. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and sharing with your friends. Today's episode is with my friend, Linda Olson. Linda was born in Calgary, and she sees that as a great gift. She loves the city, and she tells me that she hopes that it shows each night on the news. It certainly does, Linda, always. Linda's parents immigrated to Calgary from Denmark in the 1950s. Her dad was an electrician and her mom was a nurse, and they were told that they could come help build the West, and so they did. Linda has three older brothers and mentioned that she felt that she was a little spoiled. So fun. <laughs> uh, Denmark is in Linda's soul. She has been fortunate to, live, to have visited there many times, and Calgary has shaped where her heart is. Linda's always been very close to her family. Unfortunately, her father passed away on August 13th. I'm so sorry for your loss, Linda. It's always so difficult to lose a loved one. Thank you. Linda's mom was reading Zig Ziglar and the Power of Positive Thinking books back in the 1970s. She's always told her to, she's al always told her to think positively and to not talk herself down and absolutely convinced her that she could do anything. The powerful launch pad for any child and she is grateful for the gifts from both her parents. So nice. Linda's ch children are the air that she breathes. They are accomplished young adults and she's very proud of them all. Besides Linda's loved ones, she's most passionate about her, our community. She's devoted to the city. She's always been inspired by the energy and ability to keep moving forward. Even before she entered the work world, work world she knew that Calgary was a great place to be. Through Linda's work, the Nightly News, and the Woman of Vision program that she produced and hosted for 15 years, the countless community and charitable events that she hosted, she feels for fortunate to have told people stories and supported many charities. She's missing the community events as a result of COVID and hopes to be there as a voice and supporter in the near future. So awesome. Thank you so much for your service, Linda. My friends will find her full bio attached. Linda, thanks so much for joining us today. I am so thrilled to be part of this, Catherine. I just, I think it's wonderful that uh, you share the stories of people doing great things in the city and beyond. I'm, I'm a big storyteller and a big cheerleader for Calgary. So I just, I love this. and I'm thrilled to be part of it. Oh, thank you, Linda. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this discussion today. Me Excellent. Too. Are you ready for the questions we sent you? Yes. Perfect. Well, the first one being, what's been your greatest challenge, I guess, COVID and not being able to uh, get out to your community events? Were there other things that you'd like to mention? Yeah. Well, um, the first thought that came to my mind was um, a, a very personal challenge. And as you mentioned, my dad passed away on August 13th. Um, he'd had health challenges the last few years, but this was unexpected. And I think while you think you're ready and emotionally understand what's happening, um, it's just very different experiences as, as so many people have experienced. Um, so it's a new road navigating that for me and the reality of losing my biggest cheerleader, both, both my parents, but uh, we were very, very close and I talked to my dad just about every day. So while I spend a lot of time um, being very grateful for the gifts and the kind, wise man that he was just built on integrity, um, it makes it hard to miss him so much. So that's for sure, when you talk about the last few months, that's been my challenge the last few months. Um, but work-related, I mean, he was my biggest fan. Both my parents watched both newscasts. I do the five o'clock <laughs> news and the six o'clock news. <laughs> and if it interfered with dinner, they might record it, but they'd watch both newscasts every night. Um, so it was a little different going back to work after I took some um, some time off, um, thinking he was not there, but I know he's watching in his own way. But in terms of a work challenge, I mean, they were, my parents have always been very supportive of the work that I do and proud. And I, I think I try to bring that to the work that I do every day because I think it's, it's so important and I feel so fortunate to tell people stories and to celebrate the city of Calgary. But the challenge the last few months with COVID has been um, putting together a newscast that people need the important information about COVID. We know it's changing every day, right? Something changes every day, at least in those initial weeks. And now if we, or as we start to go through a second wave, what are the things that you need to know? It's critical information for the safety and well-being of your family. 
So that's always on the top of our mind, but also trying to navigate an interesting and dynamic newscast that perhaps might show you what else is going on in the world, right? That there's some um, human interest stories and, you know, something maybe that puts a smile on your face and, and shows you what kind of day it's been. So that's the work challenge is because I think, and I do understand that there's, I don't know if fatigue is the right word, but it, it, it's a very difficult situation we've all been going through and it's affecting all of us in different ways. Um, so to manage watching your nightly news and getting doses of it every night with trying to carry on with maybe a little bit of normalcy. So that's kind of one of our challenges. And um, yeah, we'll keep working on that and focus on the important stories of the day, but just even for a few minutes, maybe make you feel like there's some really great things going on out there too. That's good, I'm glad. And I, I wonder, can I ask another question around that mm -hmm. specifically? Do you find when you, of course, Zig Ziglar and all those great positive, um, you know, thoughts and, and things that you, you grew up with, do you find that when you're having to speak about the news, uh, the negative things that are happening, do you find that that affects you in some way sometimes? Or how do you balance that when you're constantly having to talk about it? I, I get asked that question a lot because yeah, if I try to think of it from the audience's point of view and you're at home on the couch and something is hard to hear, difficult to take, and you've had enough, you can turn it off. I can't turn it off. Mm. I need to carry on and, and deliver the news as best I can and stay as composed as I can and communicate clearly. And then I'm delivering the message. You take it away from there. Um, the challenge is when some of the stories are a little heavier that it does weigh on you. But I, I think I liken it almost to, to people who might be um, first responders or, or in the healthcare industry or something where there is a little bit of a buffer. Now there's a little bit of a buffer just with, there's lights everywhere. There's lights, there, there's a microphone, you got a partner, you have a, um, an earpiece and they're talking to you throughout the show. So I look at it as just, it's a little bit of a buffer than maybe what you're experiencing when you're sitting on the couch at home. Mm -hmm. And when a story's running, uh, I may have seen part of it, or some of it is surprising to me. I'll know the story, the general gist of the story, but I may not have seen the entire minute and a half story. So if you see a reaction, it's very genuine. Sometimes we come out and we're just surprised or we're laughing or we're emotional because we're reacting the same way you are. But at the same time, someone's talking to me and saying, the next story is not ready, go to the next story. And I'm flipping ahead because I didn't get enough time to read the entire newscast because I was doing something else. So um, I, it impacts me at that moment. But when I look at the big picture, I'm able to step back a little bit and look at it as, um, as a newscast in its entirety. So if hmm. that's a roundabout way of explaining that, um, I do feel very touched and emotional by a lot of the stories, but um, I guess after so many years, I've just found a way to, to put it aside for even a short period of time. That makes sense. Hmm. Thank you. I, I, will say, though, I will say though that COVID really impacted me. Um, I'm not sure why I, I've thought about it and maybe it's because in those early weeks, because there, there was no disconnect between me and the, and the story it was what I was experiencing too, what we sure. all were experiencing. So to, to understand the gravity of that, um, and I was watching all the news conferences, I was watching the city news conference every day and AHS news conference every day and typing notes and looking at the numbers and it's just getting worse and worse. And it, there was one day where I thought, I'm not sure I can do this. Wow. And, and I had to make some changes and I, decided to not turn on the news when I get the, you know, cable news when I get home at the end of the day and completely consume news all the time. And I started to listen to music and go for walks and just focus when I'm at work and say, we have a really good team, an excellent team of people. And ultimately I'm not going to miss something because everybody else is consuming news at their own pace and on their own shift and that kind of stuff too. So I tried to give back some of that responsibility and say, I can't consume it all day long because this is too much of a, a weight for me. So I've kind of gone back to somewhere in the middle now that I think we've found a way to hopefully manage this for a little while, as long as it's, it's with us, I guess. So 
Good. That's how I well, get through those tough stories. That makes sense. Thank you for sharing that, Linda. And what are your three things that you'd like to share with the audience today? Well, lots of things popped into my mind, but when I stop and think about um, what I feel like sort of defines me or shapes me and my personal life and my work life um, is the first thing would be to embrace or celebrate your uh, empathetic side. Um, I consider myself a deep thinker and I feel things very deeply. And uh, I've often been characterized as a bit of a Pollyanna, right? This is going to be okay. We can do this. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> Even when everything's crumbling around you, I, I just try to be positive and be that caring, empathetic person. And uh, I've shared this with my kids too. And I said, that it's, it's, um, it's a gift, but it can also be a challenge that when you feel everything so deeply, you kind of do take it with you. But I think like in terms of business, I think that it's uh, something to be celebrated. And I think we can all agree that it takes all kinds of people at the table to be successful mm -hmm. and to create and to have a vision and to move forward and, and all those things that we need. So I would, that's why I encourage people to celebrate their empathetic side or the empaths in the room that might see things differently. And being someone who's sensitive, overly sensitive or whatever we tend to be labeled, I don't think is a bad thing. And it doesn't mean that you're not sharp and wise. I always say, you know, don't mistake my sweetness and naivete at moments for being stupid. It's, it's just, I believe people. I think, oh, really? That's so cool. Uh, and maybe we can, it's just a different way of approaching things. And maybe we can uh, agree that that's important too in our workplaces. I love it. I agree with you. We need it all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the second thing would be to keep learning. I, I'm always learning. I mean, I've been doing this for 32 years and I've worked with some of the best and, and watch them do the same thing, which is I watch our, what we call our air check. So it's a recording of the newscast. So I, I don't watch the whole thing, but I, I'll look at it. First of all, to see if my hair and makeup was a disaster that night, because sometimes it is, we do our own hair and makeup. Sometimes very quickly. <laughs> um, so I'll look and, but also it's how I'm presenting myself, how I approached an interview. And then, like I talked about that overall look and that overall feel of a newscast. And sometimes you don't see it when you're in the middle of it. And you look at it after and you think, eh, that didn't really work. That story was a little light. And then this story was more sensitive. And, you know, maybe that transition didn't work. And so there's a, a big team, like I said, working on the newscast every day and making all those decisions and moving things around. But um, it's, it's pretty fast paced and there's a lot happening. And, and there are those moments that you look at it and you think, oh, we could have done this a little bit differently or added to this story. Um, so that's how I consider myself always learning. And with the young people too, the young people, the newer reporters, <laughs> you know, they're, they're approaching things very differently too. So I love to watch them and see how they're telling stories in a different way than I learned back in the 80s and how they approach interviews too. Um, and my dad was always learning. Like I said, he was an electrician, but uh, he studied business at night and he became a successful businessman and started his own electrical company and electrical contractor. And he, he started the health and welfare plan for electrical contractors and, and just said he was always learning and growing. And I think that's important. And, and you know, we, we can learn from each other too, in terms of supporting each other. And I've often said, why don't we have a little bit more of, if you hear something that you don't agree with, the instant response now seems to be, well, you're wrong. Right. It, it seems more contentious now, whereas maybe it would be nice to have a little bit more of, oh, I didn't think of it that way. Tell me more. You might not agree, ever agree, but maybe we could start to learn a little bit more from each other. So I'm hmm. big on learning. Love it. Oh, let me share one more story with you of that yeah, with our mutual, our mutual friend, Trish Joseph, uh, on the topic of learning, because uh, we, I think we were getting together or going out for a visit. This was a while ago. And I phoned, I said, what are you doing? And she said, I'm rewiring a light socket. <laughs> wow. I said, what? But you're not an electrician. What are you talking about? My dad's an electrician. He'll come help you. And she said, no, I took a course on how to wire your house. And she said, I take a course or two every year of something that I don't know. 
Wow. I've known Trish for 30 years and I didn't know that. I was just, what? You <laughs> took the course on how to wire your house. That's awesome. <laughs> so I love that story and, and I celebrate learning. And the third thing for me, and I won't be quite as long winded, but for me, it's uh, just to keep rolling. You know, it's not deep, but well, it's even pro more pronounced now, I think with COVID is what I've kind of uh, made that part of my mantra with my kids too, is just keep going. We, so there's some things that we don't have a choice in that you can't alter. You know, every single day, I wish we didn't have COVID and every day I wish my dad was still here and still trying to figure out a way to go back in time and <laughs> change things. But yeah. at some point you just keep rolling. And I used to uh, ask the women of vision when I would interview them and, and it kind of summed up for me part of how they do what they do and in having a vision and, and building it and creating it. I said, how, what makes you swing your legs over the side of the bed in the morning? And for some people, it's just, they have the energy and enthusiasm and they're excited. And that's just the kind of person they are. They go and they're doing that um, because of how they feel. But honestly, for other women, they're doing it in spite of how they feel. Yeah. They are just, they just keep rolling. They go through some tough stuff in business and in life. And what is going to make you swing your legs over the bed and go, okay, today, all I'm going to focus on is going forward. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems simplistic, but I will say there's been many days where that's just how I get by. Wow, how profound. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And what about the last thing that whether it's a legacy or the, anything in closing, whatever you wish? Um, well, I thought about a good news story. And maybe it kind of rolls into a little bit of if it's considered a legacy for me. But um, for me, good news is and I think the audience I would hope would agree. And that is I honestly believe Calgary is an amazing place. And I know there's been a lot of hard times, but I just believe in this city. There's it's full of history and dynamic people and just a drive to, I guess, reinvent ourselves, which we kind of have to now. Um, but just to stay positive and, and keep moving forward and try new things. And I think that energy is still there. I think a lot of those people are still there and making it happen, finding ways to make it happen. Um, so if I can maybe somehow be a part of that, whether it's supporting charitable organizations and, and giving them a platform and being part of their voice uh, or sharing people's stories on the news at night. Maybe I can continue to play that role of sharing information, important information that you need, but a bit of a cheerleader too, because born and raised here, Grace Hospital, <laughs> way back when. <laughs> and I just, I love the city. I have no desire and interest to go anywhere else so if I can someone else other people can be you know the more practical people who execute it and I'll just say we can do that <laughs> so maybe that's if I can share more of that then that would be wonderful you are a great cheerleader you always have been I love it thank you <laughs> it's so true and there's a lot of really good things that are happening you're absolutely right it's it's been some tough times for Calgary yeah. especially in Alberta uh, but man there's some really good good stories out there yeah, and I get excited when I see that. I, I well, especially a lot. My, my my one of my sons is in computer science, so anything to do with uh, um, the tech industry and AI and that kind of stuff. I'm always sending in these articles. Right, Calgary can do this. We can be a hub, and you don't have to go work for Microsoft somewhere else. <laughs> you, can, you can stay here and help us create something. So um, I have that belief, and I know that a lot of other people do too. And it's not that I'm putting on my Pollyanna hat and saying bad things haven't happened, but you know, what, what are our options is what I think, right? We just, we've got a great city that was in, in a lot of ways, extraordinarily successful. And, and I think we can get there again. I agree. In fact, I'd love to introduce your son to a friend of ours, Brett Dunwoody. He's, uh, he's actually going to be leading an artificial intelligence conference in May, 2021. And not sure if it'll be online or in person, but it'll be during that time and love to get your son involved in some way. That would be fantastic. He's already working a bit. He had a summer job and uh, he managed to, you know, thank goodness they, they were visionaries too. And they're like, we got to keep these students around. So they kept him on to keep working on their website. 
Uh, so he's doing that while he's doing school online because he's a computer guy. So he's the obvious ones to <laughs> work from home. Um, but yeah, he's got his eyes on a lot of wonderful and interesting ideas. That's exciting. I'm so glad. Yes, let's keep him here. <laughs> uh, Linda, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time and, and your words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Catherine. It's been such a pleasure to be part of this and to share a few thoughts with your audience. That was great thoughts. Thank you again. Everybody, that was Linda Olson. Check her out on the evening news. She's awesome. Thanks again for joining us for Cat's Track and we'll see you next time.